Welcome, builders of the internet. My name is Jessa and I do quantity surveying or QSing in construction. And today I thought I would talk a bit about my job. Basically, quantity surveyors are the people who look at the costs within construction, pricing how much you might expect to spend on a project, as well as looking at the risks and assessing if there are any expenses associated with them too. There's also so, so much more to it. But there are two sides, so to speak, the client who is paying for the project to be done and the contractor who is doing the work. So today I'll be comparing the differences between these roles. As always, you can find my sources in the description. It's building on my mind. Client's Quantity Surveyor The Client's Quantity Surveyor has various different titles, but they can also be known as a Consultant's Quantity Surveyor, a PQS, a Professional Quantity Surveyor, or a PPQS, a Private Practice Quantity Surveyor. They can be employed by a client at various stages of a project. For example, there is the pre-contract phase, which is before any of the works have actually started. When in the process of coming up with the details of the project, the PQS can provide estimates to determine how feasible the project is, and this can then provide the client with a realistic expectation of the cost. This can also be used to determine a budget or cost limit for the works. Throughout the design and planning process, there tends to be more and more information available about the site, so the client's quantity surveyor can provide more accurate and detailed cost plans. The surveyors can also provide input on how to reduce the costs and recommend cheaper alternatives if things are looking too expensive, as they usually are. If the project has reached a stage of selecting a contractor or a builder to do the works, the client's quantity surveyor may be involved in preparing the documents that will go out to the prospective contractors in something called the tender stage. The information prepared does depend on the contract, the scale of the works and so on, but often this can involve a pricing document that lists out the items required. The documents can also have drawings and surveys of the site that give more information about what to expect for the buildings and the conditions, as well as having something called employer's requirements, which might include the particular information about the client's intentions and how sections of the contract might be filled out or amended. Once they've had submissions from the contractors who are interested, the PQSs will then have to analyse and compare all of this information to ensure that all the items have been priced so that comparisons are fair. For example, one person might have the cheapest price for the works, but this might be because they've forgotten to price something or maybe excluded some really important items. Sometimes, through these analyses and queries sent out, there may be circumstances where the more expensive submissions end up being chosen. Once a contractor has been selected, the quantity surveyor may then need to prepare a contract that has the conditions between the client and the contractor. As an agreement has been made, the works will then start on site. This stage of the project is called the post-contract phase. This is where the PQS is likely to have more opportunities to go on site. They may have valuations at certain intervals, often monthly, where they assess how much of the works have been completed. The contractor will often send an application for how much payment they think they should get, and the PQS is there to ensure that the contractor is being paid fairly. Most of the time, changes will occur throughout a project, and the client's quantity surveyor can be involved with the negotiations in order to get a reasonable price for the different types of works that are being introduced. When the project is reaching completion, there will have to be discussions that talk about the final total of the works or the final account, and this will have to be agreed by both the contractor and the client. There will often be a walk around of the site that identifies any defects or things that still need a bit of work done, and the contractor will then have to fix these before being paid the full amount. PQSs can also have involvement after the project is complete, so when the building is already there. They can do things called life cycle costs to assess how much it might cost to maintain, repair and clean the building over the period of its lifespan, which can be up to 60 years into the future. Contractors Quantity Surveyor 
The contractor's quantity surveyor is also known as a CQS and their main aim is to maximise the amount of profit that their organisation makes with each project. They will be involved in the tender stage too, pricing the submissions that the PQS has sent and ensuring that they're low enough to be competitive against the other submissions but still high enough to make it worthwhile for the business to do. They may also need to ensure that the correct documentation is being submitted, say all the insurances and so on. If the contractor gets selected to do the job, the CQS will then have to make applications for payment at the valuations, which the PQS will then assess. There will be negotiations to do with any changes that occur, and the CQS may also have to make applications for extending the time taken to do the works without facing financial penalties. For example, there may be unexpected circumstances that cause delays to occur. Contractors QSs may also have more technical experience of the work compared to the client surveyor, as they tend to oversee the work being done on a regular basis, going on site more often and communicating with many different parties involved, say the contracts team, the subcontractors, the programmers, the designers and so on. They may have to produce internal reports at regular intervals that state the progress and evaluate the project's successes, the risks and where there needs to be improvements made, as well as forecasting the expenditure and looking at the money that is coming in versus the money that's going out. When the project is coming to the end, they usually have to produce a lot of documents for the client, including an operation and maintenance manual for the building so that the client knows about the details of any insurances and warranties of their building products and so on. If this was too long and you didn't want an in-depth discussion about what each of these roles do, basically the client's quantity surveyor is trying to provide advice and recommendations to the client whose goals are usually to have the works done for as cheap as possible, whilst the contractor's quantity surveyor is aiming to make as much profit and make as much money as they can from the job. There can be disputes between both sides as they may have conflicting agenda and want different things, but at the end of the day, they're both just trying to do their jobs. Thanks for watching. I'm sure there are many more facets to these roles that I'll learn in the coming years. I'm currently working on the client side, so feel free to tell me more about what I've missed on the contractor side or if you have anything else to add down in the comments. That's all I have to say for now. I hope it helps build on your mind. Thanks for watching this channel is building on my mind. Check out my other videos, but first hit the bell and comment, like, subscribe.